Welcome to the deep dive. Today, we're diving into Ikigai. Have you heard of it? I have. It's everywhere these days. It is. It's like everyone's suddenly an expert on this Japanese secret to a long and happy life. Right. But we're taking a deeper look here today. We've got a great book review of Ikigai, The Japanese Secret to a Long and Happy Life. Really gets into the nitty gritty. I'm intrigued. What's the review say? Does it live up to the hype? Well, the reviewer starts with this anecdote about a former colleague asking them about their own ikigai. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And it got them thinking, like, you know, like, what is it about this concept that sparks such introspection, even in people who are already pretty familiar with Japanese culture? It's true. There's something about this idea of ikigai that just resonates. It's like this universal search for purpose. Exactly. And the book itself goes deep into Okinawa, Japan, you know, the island with all the centenarians. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've heard of that. So they actually interviewed these centenarians to understand, like, what's their secret? And surprise, surprise, they credit this concept of ikigai as a contributing factor. Okay, so what's their ikigai? What's the big secret? Well, that's the thing. The reviewer points out that these secrets aren't actually revolutionary. Really? Yeah, it's not like some ancient hidden knowledge or anything. So what is it then? A lot of it boils down to, like, strong community bonds. Okay. In Okinawa, they have these groups called Moai, basically. It's like a built-in social support system. And we know strong social ties are crucial for mental and physical well-being. Right. It's like having a built-in buffer against stress and loneliness. Exactly. And then there's the whole diet aspect. Of course. The Okinawan diet. Always hear about that. Tons of vegetables, especially sweet potatoes, low in sugar and processed food. You know, all the things we hear about all the time. Yeah. Pretty standard healthy living advice. Right. It's interesting because it's like they're rediscovering common sense, you know? Yeah. Sometimes I think we need that reminder, though. Life gets so chaotic, we forget the basics. That's so true. It's easy to get caught up in the day-to-day -day and forget about those foundational things that actually contribute to a long and happy life. Totally. Maybe that's the appeal of Ikigai. Yeah. It's like this framework, you know? Helps us refocus on those core elements. Right. And here's another layer the author brings up. Japan, it's not a deeply religious country. Interesting. Yeah. How does that play into it? Their argument is that without a predefined religious structure, individuals are kind of forced to find their own meaning. Ah, so they have to define their own purpose, their own version of Ikigai. Exactly. It's like if life doesn't come with a script, you have to write your own. I like that. It's empowering in a way. And it's like the book even touches on this new thing called Oshikatsu. Oshikatsu, yeah. This is so interesting to me. It's like finding your purpose, but in a very specific way. It is. It's about finding that purpose through like passionate support of something or someone you admire. Right. Like musicians or artists or even fictional characters. Exactly. And it goes beyond just, you know, being a fan. It's about actively engaging, connecting ah. with other fans. Yeah. Like it's about being a part of a community. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that sense of belonging is huge, right? Like, we crave that. Totally. It's like finding your tribe, even if it's through, like you said, a shared love for a fictional character. It really makes you think about where we find meaning, right? It's not always about these big traditional goals. It's not all about climbing the corporate ladder anymore. Right. Sometimes it's those smaller passions, those things that bring you joy and connect you with others. Mm -hmm. And that can be incredibly powerful. It all comes back to Ikigai, doesn't it? Finding that thing that gives you a reason to get up in the morning. Exactly. And that looks different for everyone, of course. For some people, it's about their career. For others, it's about their hobbies, their relationships. Right. And for some, it's Oshikatsu. Exactly. It's about finding what lights you up. I love that. Okay, so the reviewer also pulled out some quotes from the book that I wanted to mention. Oh, I love a good quote. What do they pick out? Okay, so this one really stuck with me. It says, life is not a problem to be solved. Just remember to have something that keeps you busy doing what you love while being surrounded by the people who love you. Wow. It's so simple but so powerful, right? I know. It's like we get so caught up in the problem-solving part of life that we forget to just live. We're always striving, always looking for the next thing, the next accomplishment. And it's true. We're always looking ahead to the next thing instead of just appreciating where we are right now. I know. It's like we forget to enjoy the journey. Exactly. But this quote, it's like a little reminder, you know. Just find something you love, surround yourself with people you love, and just live. And that's enough. It really makes you think, is Ikigai really some big secret? Or is it just remembering those things, those simple truths? Right. Maybe it's both. <laughs> I think exploring these ideas, like Ikigai, 
It gets us asking the important questions. Mm -hmm. It's like holding up a mirror, isn't it? Like, how are we actually living our lives? Are we chasing things that really matter? Yeah. Are we truly passionate about what we're doing? Or are we just going through the motions? That's the question, isn't it? And maybe that's what we should all take away from this deep dive, Ikigai. It's not like this magic formula. It's personal. It is. It's about discovering what makes you tick, what brings you joy, what makes you feel alive, and finding a way to make those things a part of your life. It's about designing a life you love. Exactly. And that's going to look different for everyone. There's no one right way to do it. That's a great point to end on. Finding your own version of Ikigai, your own path to a long and happy life. Absolutely. It's been great exploring this with you today. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me.